Hi everybody. I really want to speak to the woman that was really had some grief here about what we're doing. What I do is I'm part of the Center for Nonviolent Communication or Compassionate Communication. That's my stuff over there. I'm offering empathy. Um, to me, what this is about is we all need empathy. We all need to know that what's happening for us has been heard, that we can really connect with the pain in us so that we don't lash out in ways that are not connecting. And often when we do violent acts, I find it's because the revenge or any type of that is because we're not understood, we're not heard. People need a place that's safe that they can really speak their truth to be able to heal. So that's what I'd like to provide. I'm gonna probably do one here. I'll probably do one at the site of where the tragedy happened on Saturday at the same time it happened. I wanna give people a place to be heard. Um, this is Marshall Rosenberg's work, Nonviolent Communication. We're in 42 countries. I share it anywhere people ask me to share. It's really a way to speak peace because all of our peace groups are gonna be a moot point unless we deal with our own internal violence and the way we're violent both to ourselves and to others. And to me, what I say by violence is not physical, it's verbal. It's when I use shoulds or have tos or musts, when I don't take full responsibility for my entire experience of life, when I blame others, when I shame others, when I criticize others. This is time for us to take responsibility for our experiences and speak from our heart lovingly in a way people can hear. I responded when I saw Raul Grijalva's note to us, the last couple lines, it said, if our empathy and appreciation for each other disappear from our discourse, our society and our future will be at risk. I totally concur with that. I have a lot of grief about that. We need to learn a language of compassion and care and love. And some of the ways we can do that is to realize that we all have the same needs. Even that boy, that 22 year old boy that shot all these people, he was doing the best to meet his needs even though none of us would agree with the strategy. People do the very best they can to meet their needs and sometimes it can have deadly impact. So the point is here, how do we learn a way to meet our needs that really is in cooperation with others? That's really connecting to others and not at somebody else's expense. That's what this process of compassionate communication about is about. It's about a conscious me taking full responsibility and it's a process of a practice of a four-step process to speak my truth and to hear other people with compassion even that woman that was yelling but it's about Gabby in the hospital so I want to hear that I don't want to shush her I don't want to send somebody to take her away that she's not peacefully demonstrating here I want to say I really hear you I acknowledge that you would really like us to focus our full and total attention on Gabby right now that that's where you would really appreciate the energy for her healing. To really hear her before we say anything different. Because the civil discourse, to me, we're always going to disagree. But if we have a way that we can do that with love and care, and knowing she's doing the very best she can to meet her needs, just like I am right now, to share this with you, my sense is there's hope for the future. Thank you.